Alright, we're going to talk about controllers for a little bit. The controller processes data that is input from the sensor, applies the logic of control, and causes an output action to be generated. The uh, four different representations of controllers up here. Okay, We've got the, uh, the spider controller from Honeywell. We've got Easy I.O. controller. This is an old XL15. And this one right here is kind of neat. This is the PCG from Johnson Controls. It's fairly new. We're going to get into the, what this means more here in a second. I'm trying to stay out of your way and I apologize. The, uh, but the, the PCG is configurable controller, but it's also programmable. So remind me that when we get to configure programmable to tell you why that thing's a little important, I'll go a little bit more in depth. Um, not you, you can't answer this time. We gotta get somebody else. So um, which one of these controllers do you guys think are gonna put on a VAV unit? The top one? Raise your hand if you think it's the top one. All right, one guy says the top one. The bottom one? Left one, right one? Raise your hand if you're not gonna vote at all. So if you're not gonna vote, raise your hand. All right. Well, now we got some. Uh, now we got some folks in here. The top one is the. Uh, it's this here is a, is a, a spider controller from Honeywell. It's got a VAV. Um, it's not a, it doesn't have to be a VAV actuator, but it's got an actuator built into it. We're going to go into this a little bit more in depth. <clears throat> Inputs and outputs. Obviously, that's with your controller. That's what you have to have. Um, that's the whole point of it. You're sucking things in and you're spitting things out. All right. So different kinds of inputs and outputs. Analog is typically a voltage or current measurement from a variable, um, temperature, humidity, velocity, or pressure, and sent to a vice. Think a number. Okay. So if I'm talking about, you know, temperature, if I'm thinking about pressure, discharge, air temperature, something like that, that's going to be an analog input or output. All right. The next one is digital. All right. It's used for starting and stopping equipment. It's a true false statement. So think off and on. All right. My fan's off. My fan's on. You know, my lights are off. My lights are on. Um, you know, true false. That kind of thing. Okay. And then finally, you get universal. They can be analog or digital. Works out pretty neat. We'll get to it here in a second. I think on the next slide or two. Um, there's actually a different type of I/O that you can use on top of these, but these are the ones that you're going to see most often. This is an example of uh, the spider we talked about with the actuator built in. So you can see it's got the uh, floating actuator housing integrated into the system. Um, the spider gives you color coded inputs and outputs. We're going to talk about different communication protocols. Backnet is one of them. And if you ever wanted to know how you could tell if something was backnet or not, every backnet controller that you see out there is going to have little dip switches here because you have to address and give a unique address to every device that you have in your system um, if it's backnet. So if you ever want to be smart and, and play one on your, your buddies, just go over and tell them, you know, what is this or not, and you can tell them it's backnet. Um, this is the, the exception to the inputs outputs is the silk bus down here. Most manufacturers are going to make a proprietary uh, communications bus, okay? So it's not really I.O., it's really a communications bus. But if I have, um, you know, if I have, if I need eight inputs on a controller, let's um, we'll say I need nine and my controller can only accept eight, well then I have to bump up to the next biggest controller or I have to add a second controller. Um, you can double the you know, price for, for one extra input, right? The Silk Bus is Honeywell's um, proprietary communication protocol, and it allows certain Honeywell devices to ride on that controller and not have to use I/O. Okay, so if you're if you're doing takeoffs on a job and you want to really make sure that you get in there a little bit, or you save your customer some money, or yourself some money, you want to go look and see what can ride on the Silk Bus. Johnson Controls is an SA bus, sensor actuator bus. Okay? So it's just another way to save yourself money, and that's where you'll see that if you get out here and you're trying to sell this stuff, you're trying to install it, you're a contractor, you're going to see this is where you're going to make your money is knowing what your product will and will not do. Sure. Um, could you hook up two devices running into an input and then do an average? Um, the not into the same one. But I can get it. It, it, it would not accept. Um, so you so you could not run one input running two sensors 
and do an average on two of them, both of those zones. You, you could, yeah. not, not on that, no. Nope. Um, if you want to do what you do, which is done every single day, you would run two different inputs into a controller, or we'll get into it, you can suck them up into a Jace and average them that way. So your, your question is going to get answered here in just a little bit. And if it doesn't, remind me and I'll, I'll go into more detail. Um, and as you can see, this is a programmable controller. Okay, It's not configurable. Spider is the the be all do all um, controller that's out there. It's the it's one of the most robust, um, but it's a blank sheet. When you go into the programming tool, it's a white sheet of paper. And that's it. And you go in there and you start doing your thing. All right. So we know that DDC is direct digital control. We know that it's the automated control of a condition or process by a digital device. And I meant to actually put some controllers up here real quick. <coughs> We're just going to say these are VAVs. These are rooftop units. Let's just say this is a, uh, a VFD. Okay? When we get done here, we're going to have a whole system architecture up on the board. All right, so we know that DDC is direct digital control. It's the automated control of a condition or process by a digital device that also communicates. So those things will not communicate with each other. If I just hand you a controller, say go to town, it doesn't talk to anything other than what you wire it to. Okay? These, uh, they, don't, they don't have the ability to just get themselves on a network or anything like that. So you have to have you know, another device. So what is the JACE? Java Application Control Engine. Don't write that down. I didn't know what it was until I actually uh, I'd sold hundreds of these things. I never knew that JACE stood for Java Application Control Engine. I don't know if did anybody in here know that. You guys aren't gonna raise your hand anyway, so I'll just quit asking questions. <laughs> the, uh, so these are a couple of uh, um, different JACE options. This is a. Uh, an FX60 from Johnson Controls and a Web 600 from Honeywell. Once you pop that plastic cover off, the exact same thing is inside. If I went out there and, and, and there's probably there's probably 45 different instances of Niagara right now with Tritium, Jace's, and they're all the same. Okay, so don't get caught up if someone tells you that a Vicon Jace is better than a Honeywell Jace, or you know the Johnson Controls Jace is, is better than the Schneider Jace. It's not. It's the same exact thing. Okay, same exact thing. <clears throat> so it's the mechanism that provides connectivity to systems within a building. So what we're going to do is we're going to take all of our controllers in a system, and we're going to suck them up into that Jace. We're going to go into more detail on that, but that is actually what you you go dial into in your system to go look at your graphics of what's going on in your system and you can, like you talked about a second ago, share your set points and do averaging and that type of stuff. Okay? So now we've got a Jace up here. So how do we communicate? Communication protocols. All right. We've been in here about 30 minutes now. We're warmed up. It's going to kind of get a little bit confusing and dicey here for a second, so make sure you pay attention. All right, communication protocols. These are just a few. There's probably 50 plus. You've probably heard of 10 of them. Okay? But there's different ones that are out there that you're going to run into from time to time. Um, Lawnworks, BackNet, Modbus, into several different others. The way that you need to look at these things is like different languages, okay? Spanish, Italian, German, French. 
Do not confuse yourself and think that I'm telling you that lawn was invented in Spain and back net invented in Italian. That's not what I'm trying to get across here to you. What I'm saying is think of those things on the left as different languages, all right? So if I have a lawn works controller, all that stuff over there is lawn, all this stuff in here is back net. They don't know the same language. It's an English person trying to doesn't know Spanish, trying to talk to a Spanish person, and etc. They can't talk to each other. Okay? I think you know where I'm going with this. The Jace is the translator. The Jace knows every language that's out there. All right. So you're going to be able to suck all these different um, communication protocols, whether they're currently existing or whether you're adding them into a new system. You may go into a new a new building and say, you know, I want to um, I want to use this controller because it's easier to program, it's configurable, and it's BACnet, so I want to use it on all my VAV boxes, but I really like that spider controller for my, my chiller, right? my big air handler, so I want to use a lawn spider um, to go do that. You can do that. You can set your system up that way. It's not a big deal. It's not a big problem at all. Conversely, what you can do is you can go like some guys from Shoemate just run into this all the time, okay? You're gonna go into a building and there's gonna be um, lawn and back net and maybe a little bit of N2 existing in that building. Almost every building here has tried something different, a different flavor of something out there and they don't talk to each other and they don't, they don't do anything, it's not optimized. You go in there and you take out whatever their front end system is if they have one like a Johnson Controls NAE or something like that, rip that off the wall, you pop a JSON there, you suck all the existing stuff in, now it's coordinated together, now it's gonna to work together, okay? That's pretty darn neat. So you can get into a building and put some stuff in there right out of the, right out of the gate and to take that building over, and it's, now it's an open protocol, all right? So your, your customer's no longer, or you're no longer locked in to that branch or that contract or whatever. Once you put a JSON there, it's open, and anybody can go in there and connect to your JACE. There's some restrictions, but for the most time, just for the purpose of this class, anybody can go in there and take over your JACE now. So that's good and bad. That's good if you're a contractor, it's bad if you're a contractor. If you're a bad contractor, that's really bad because you can get kicked off the job and somebody's gonna come and do your work. But if you're a good contractor, it's great because you may uh, go in there and can take over for somebody else that hasn't done quite a good job. If you're an end user, if you're, if you're a guy like Freeman that's running a building and he gets sick of who, who's taking care of him, you know, he can, uh, he can say, see you later, Scott, have a good one. And uh, that would never happen, by the way, but the, uh, <laughs> so the, um, you know, have a good one. And, uh, you know, he can bring somebody else in there to take over his building, okay? Hey, Rob, this interpret um, ALC already Yep, absolutely. Yep, we're going to get into how here in just a little bit. Keep the questions coming. All right, <clears throat> now, what I want to do real quick is I want to walk around with this thing. This is, this is a Jace. This is a different type of Jace though, okay? This isn't, this isn't what I showed you up on the board. But what, it's, it's physically the same, okay? Um, now, let's say that we have 100 VAV boxes that we're gonna pull into this thing, 100 VAV boxes. What confused the heck out of me is if you look at this thing, there's no place to put 100 I.O. and wire into this thing, okay? It's impossible. So I could never figure out how the heck did that happen. I'm assuming, well, there must be some big terminal strip that you connect into this thing, or, or how does this happen? Does anybody want to take a guess as to what wiring scheme we would use to connect 100 VAV controllers together and then suck them into a Jace? Got it. We've got some smart folks in here. Daisy chain. And so, Rob, you're putting everybody to sleep, buddy. How? I'm not sure. <laughs> what do I need to do different? <laughs> In their horn. Huh? The, uh, you want me to scream? I can come sit in your lap. I don't know. What do you want me to do? The, uh, um, so this is a daisy chain, okay? Now what you're gonna notice here is that um, this is the distance of three different controllers, all right? So you're gonna run one wire from the positive of this one into the positive of this one. And then you're gonna do the same thing from the negative to the negative of this one. 
But what you're going to do here, as you guys already know this because you answered the question, is you're going to run a separate wire into the same exact terminal, which is kind of what you are talking about earlier, but it doesn't work with I.O. It works with communication protocols. Okay, I'm going to get, it's going to make sense in a second. But you're actually going to run these together so they're going to link. So if you think about it, if, I, if this controller were to die or to be taken off the wall, actually if it took off the wall it wouldn't be a good example, but if this were to die, the reason you data chain thing together is for one to save I.O., but two is you're going to um, still have a connection with your wire. Your wire is twisted together, it's put into the same terminal on your COM bus, and it's linked together. Okay? It doesn't know that there's a controller in there at some point. That's a little different than I.O. though, because you're not gonna because you can't have one controller controlling I.O. This is for just communication. So it makes sense? All right, so what we would do here right so we got one wire from this one to this one a separate wire into the same terminal block into this one the same thing so on and so forth okay into the J's all right Now, this is going to make sense here in a second because I told you that you only had, you know, limited output, right? Yes, sir. Do the controllers have to be the same case chain them together or does it matter? They have to be the same communication protocol. Good question. Okay. So, these are all going to be um, instances of WAN, BAVs. They could be BACnet, they could be N2, they could be whatever, but for, for my example, We're taking three different protocols and we're sucking them into the same J's and those things are now communicating with each other, okay? So what we have here is a, is a system architecture and uh, you can see that what you have are, this is your HVAC stuff, there may be this exact instance, you may have lawn, back net and Modbus within your HVAC. You may tell you your security in your video, you may have some VFDs, some submeters type stuff and then your, your lighting and that kind of thing. You can suck all them in. Sometimes you can put them all on one Jace. Sometimes you have to have separate Jaces. If you're doing security and video, you put those on a separate Jace, a security Jace. But in other instances, it's all the same. So what we have here is a representation of, we have this HVAC part here with the controllers. We have this Jace here. And maybe in our system we may have several Jaces. We may have several Jaces for HVAC. We may have several Jaces for what you see up here. All the Jaces, and we're not going to touch on this any further because it just gets confusing, we tie them into a supervisor. So if you look at it, you got three different levels, okay? The controllers, the Jaces, and then the, the Jaces on top of that, okay? No, you weren't lying. I guess uh, it's your right. So yeah. If you need to control it or measure it, Stromquist and Company has a control solution for you. With over $2 million of inventory between our Georgia and Florida locations, an easy to use online ordering platform, same day shipping, and a factory trained team of controls experts to answer your questions, Stromquist and Company continues in its tradition of offering great service and great products. 